Hi folks, it's Chris, welcome back. Today we want to give the collimation of our Newtonian telescope a go. Like an instrument, the Newtonian telescope needs to be tuned every other day to get the best performance out of it. This process is called collimation and it's a crucial step before using your telescope. As you will see, collimation is an easy step to do and there is no need to be intimidated by that. So why collimating a mirror telescope anyway? The answer is very easy. Your telescope has several light paths hidden inside of it. This is the light entering the scope and hitting the main mirror. This is the light path from the main mirror to the secondary mirror. And this is the light path from the secondary mirror to our camera or the eyepiece. Simplified summary of collimation. Every light path of those need to be parallel or perpendicular. Most importantly, we need to use the central region of our primary mirror as the central region of our image. If any of those lines are off, if we use the edge of the primary mirror instead of the central region, we will get aberrations in the final image. Those aberrations are elongated stars or deformed stars, reduced contrast within planetary or lunar imaging. And sure enough, we don't want such things, but we want to get the most out of our telescope. So before imaging or observing, make sure collimation is spot on. Lucky us, the process is very easy and done in four steps where the first and the second step is once only and only the third and the fourth step need to be repeated every so often. We need to center the secondary, then align the secondary, then align the primary, and then do a star test. That's all and this is no wizard's work and we have fancy tools in our hands, so let's go. For performing this alignment, we're gonna use those three tools plus our camera or an eyepiece. The collimation cap, the Cheshire eyepiece, the collimation laser, and, as mentioned, the camera or the eyepiece. Disclaimer, SV Boni reached out to me and they asked me whether I can review their products, this Cheshire eyepiece and their laser collimator. I said yes and they sent me those two items free of charge and I can use them and keep them and since they were great, I decided I gonna include them into their natural environment and integrate them into this collimation tutorial which will therefore be in part a product review and in part a tutorial but with collimation and the tools needed there, there's, I think, no part without the other. I thank S4 Boni for this opportunity and I think that the review of such helpful items will suit the character of this channel well. So let's move on. Part 1. Aligning the secondary mirror to the focus tube. In this step, we want to look through the focus tube and center the secondary mirror within the tube's field of view, if you will. Our elliptical mirror needs to be tilted until it's circular and it needs to be central within the tube's field of view, as you will, and centered within the telescope's tube. The secondary mirror is held in place by those four spider struts. To center the secondary mirror within the tubes of the scope, you'd need to adjust the spider struts, but normally you won't need to do that. Most of the time, we only use those four screws. The outer ones, the small ones, are for tilting and the central one is for adjusting the mirror along the long axis of the telescope. To objectify whether the secondary is central, we need to fix the angle we look into the focus tube. Because if we introduce an angle, we can't confirm the relative position of the secondary. To fix our view, we will use the most basic item on our list, the collimation cap. This is actually nothing but a film roll can. The lid and a central tiny hole inside the lid. It's important that this hole is very central, as mentioned before, and I used a hot needle to melt the hole inside the lid. Once prepared, we can use the cap instead of an eyepiece or a camera because luck demands it, or clever engineering, who knows, the film or can and a one and a quarter tube have the same diameter. <laughs> Amazing. In addition, I will use my trusty smartphone holder from Celestron and use my smartphone to center the view. This way I can work the screws and keep a good view on the situation. But you don't need to do this. I just think this is handy, but you can use the cap on its own, all good. Now we loosen all the screws and use the central one to push or pull the mirror along the long axis of the telescope until it's central. This is the first step. And next we use the outer three screws to tilt the elongated secondary mirror until it is somewhat circular, as circular as it gets. This is a little bit of guesswork, but try it as best as you can. Central and circular, both achieved with the collimation cap and in my case with a smartphone. It's very handy to use the phone in this step, as it will produce the same angle of view constantly. In my case, I aligned the phone using the collimation cap and then I removed the cap to get a clearer view. 
as the phone is kept in place by the smartphone holder, this is all good. Ok, next step up, aligning the secondary towards the primary mirror. Remember, it is super important to use the center of our primary mirror to avoid aberrations. Thus, we need to get the primary spot on in the center of the secondary, or vice versa. And for this step, I personally use the laser collimator from S4 Boney. Ok, review time. This is the laser collimator from S4 Boney. This is a very handy tool, it's good quality and I highly recommend using this or something like it. It is, as the name suggests, a laser that collimates your telescope. It is a precisely machined cylinder with a laser beaming out at the rear. Here you can turn it on and switching between different brightness modes. I always use mode 7 but choose whatever you like. And behind this cap are the batteries and here are some screws hidden where you can recalibrate the laser. We don't need to do it right now. Here you can see a 45 degrees inclined window with a target display with a bullseye. We need this for the last step so stay tuned. All in all, this is very easy to use. And as for Boney, pack that with a 2 inch to a 1 and a quarter inch adapter, which is very handy as well. Link for this product is in the description below. We will actually use this device twice in our procedure. First time only the laser and second time the bullseye target as well. Okay, back to aligning the secondary mirror relative to the primary. So, for now we want to use the laser to visualize the light path of our starlight. If we point the laser through the focus tube onto the secondary, it will reflect the laser onto the primary. And then you can carefully look into the telescope tube, but please hold a hand or a sheet of paper in front so that you don't get the laser beam into your eyes. This can severely damage your eye and even blind you. But if everything is safe, we can see a red dot on the primary. And our concern is that we want to center this dot on the primary mirror using the tilting of the secondary mirror. If your secondary mirror is already nearly circular, the divergence won't be much. But it's important to nail this point. Move the three outer screws to move the dot until it is spot on perfect in the center of the primary mirror. You can also use the Cheshire eyepiece to do this step and align the primary mirror and the secondary reflection using the eyepiece. But I found it mostly convenient to just point the laser and watch the red dot meeting the center of the primary mirror altogether. An important side note. One major downside of the laser collimator is it being affected by tilts and even tiny tilts or angles when being inserted into the adapter. This is nothing specific with S4 Boney's laser, but a general thing. Just make sure that you press the laser gently against the adapter to remove any tilt and B, maybe rotate the laser to see if the returning laser moves or stays in place. The reason behind this phenomenon is the long light path. In my case, it's two times 750 millimeters of travel distance, so any tiny error at the start will heavily increase over time and result in big errors at the end. So make sure your laser sits tightly. But all good, we align the secondary mirror all fine. Now it's time to use the tools we have to pinpoint the primary mirror. This step is also very crucial, so we will use both the laser and the Cheshire eyepiece to verify the result. The idea behind this is that we now hit the primary mirror spot on with our light path but now the primary mirror needs to throw back the light, if you will, in exactly the same way so that the starlight reaches our eyes undisturbed. Therefore, we need to adjust the tilt of the primary to align those axes. We can use the Cheshire eyepiece for this step. And this time I like this tool most. Why? I will answer this in a second. Review time again. This is a Cheshire eyepiece from S4 Boney. <laughs> what is this? Well, basically it's just a more sophisticated version of our collimation cap. It fits snugly into the one and a quarter focus tube and has a little pin on the front. But there's more to it, of course. Here on the side there is a 45 degree angle surface, again much like with the collimation laser. Why so? If we look through the eyepiece, Later on we can see the reflecting surface in the image and distinguish this from other elements. We need this to get everything aligned, but this also means you should use this tool at daylight anyway and orient it in a way that the reflective surface catches most of the light. 
An additional feature are those crosshairs in the middle. They are essential to aim for centrality with the alignment of different reflection patterns and mirror parts. The Shashar eyepiece from S4 Boney is simple, robust and <laughs> rock solid. Everyone with a mirror telescope will want such a device anyway and this eyepiece made a great impression regarding building quality and accuracy and the price is very fair. My Omegon eyepiece for example nearly cost double the price having in the end very similar properties. Okay, now for aligning the primary, you now simply look through the eyepiece and tilt the primary until everything is aligned and the view looks like this. Central point of the main mirror and the central point of the bull's eye within the Cheshire eyepiece, both crosshairs and the centralized surrounding of the primary, everything is in line. Tilting of the primary mirror is normally done by loosening all the locking screws and then gently using the tilt screws and afterwards gently tightening the locking screws without screwing everything up. And here's a drawing of what is what. It can be a bit confusing at first, but you'll get the grip. For final alignment, it doesn't matter anyway, everything must be in line, that's all. As I said, this is a daylight task, but looking through the eyepiece will give you a definite answer of whether alignment was successful or not. Cheshire eyepieces are much more solid and they don't tilt as much as the lasers do. And this is why I like them so much in this part of the alignment. But there is an alternative approach. You can use the s Boney laser collimator for this step as well. And most importantly, you can use this laser for this step in darkness. So whenever you arrived in a destination where you drove to at night, use the laser to fine tune your collimation. Using the laser collimator for this step is very, very easy. You gently slide it into the focus tube like in step two and remember the tilting. It needs to be as tilt-free as possible. So make sure to gently press it into the adapter before tightening the screws. After this, turn on the laser and you will see a red dot on the targeting area here at the side of the laser. This is the returning laser after being reflected on all the mirrors within your telescope. The goal of the game in this part is the laser shall take the same way in and out. So we need to align this returning laser dot with the exiting laser. In other words, turn the alignment screws on the primary mirror until the red laser dot perfectly aligns with the bull's eye of the laser collimator. Done. Easy as that. And this step is actually the only part you need to redo every time you image. The first two parts are only need to be done initially and you need to take care that the second step of aligning the secondary is done properly. But afterwards, this step 3 is the only thing you need to redo because the lightweight secondary mirror is unlikely to shift during usage but the heavy primary will. To emphasize this point, tilt or false collimation of the laser collimator itself can cause the collimation to differ. Try it yourself. Collimate the telescope at daylight with a laser and afterwards check it with the Cheshire. You will see differences this way or the other way around. One is spot on and the other is slightly off. This has nothing to do with those specific tools, but instead both methods, due to tilting and mechanical errors, will only get you near perfect collimation. And this is mostly good enough, but for perfect alignment we will need to add another point. I mean you can minimize the effect by cross-checking both methods and or minimizing the tilt or the false collimation of your laser itself. Here's a link on how to calibrate the laser itself, if needed, check it out, it's very good. But whatever method you choose, check out this video of Galactic Hunter. They do it in under 90 seconds, so after a few times it's no big deal, especially using this fancy laser. Okay, as said, after this third step we need just another final step. But this one should be incorporated into your alignment and focus routine anyway, so this is no big deal. Because whatever the mechanical alignment tells you, the only true judge is the image of the star itself. No matter what you collimated the hell out of your telescope. In the end we want to see sharp stars. And this is the only true and fundamental metric we can use to confirm collimation. You can use a high magnifying eyepiece on a bright star and defocus it in order to see if you get perfect concentric rings around it. I normally use a camera on my scope and did an entire video about using this to confirm collimation. You see it here in short, but check out the full video. You defocus and use overlays within SharpCap or any other imaging software to confirm that your donut is spot on. I use this method whenever I focus on a bright star anyway, so no big additional work to do. 
So adjusting the secondary mirror's position and rotation using a collimation cap. Then tilting secondary mirror to aim at primary mirror very precisely using the laser. And then step 3 adjusting the tilt of the primary to reflect the light back perfectly either checked by laser as well or using the Cheshire eyepiece. After this check collimation during focus on a bright star called star test. And that's that, you're all good to go either to image or to observe the marvelous wonders of the universe. Remember to redo the star test and the step 3 ever so often. Because as I said, the telescope is like a musical instrument. It really needs to be tuned every other day, to be able to shine the way it is supposed to do. And with those big words I end this video. Big thanks again for S4 Boney for making this video possible. All links to their products within this video are in the description below, including some discounts for you folks, so check them out. And yeah, as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.